We have made it to the island and found the man responsible for the murder of the mercenary. We are being given three options. How long had you been watching her? You wanted to punish her, so you killed him and you had feelings for that woman. I don't know if we can ask all three. I would like to, but let's make sure we choose something. <laughs> I, man, I want to say that he had feelings for the woman. Or that he punished her. Either or. Let's go with the feelings. I'm very curious to knowing what's wrong. He probably knew who she was. He wasn't just randomly watching civilians do their thing. You had feelings for that woman. Oh yeah, because he also left flowers outside her balcony. There's... <laughs> There's nothing to hold on to. Only this. It's, it's not enough. The coals of his eyes glisten suddenly, like stones dripping with water. Is he crying? Man needs to feel something else. In this fight, it helps if you have your eye on something there. It's weakness, I know. There have been others? Yes. Over the years, it's not unproletarian to feel something. Was that why you left the dried flowers behind her window? No. He starts to shake his head again, a sunflower on a withered stalk. Why then? I don't really know. I was there one night and she was crying, like a child, in the corner of her room on the floor, like she does sometimes. When was this? The day after I killed him. And you brought her Maybells? Yes. I don't know why I do the things I do anymore. You wanted to console her? Maybe. I told you. I have holes in my brain now. I wouldn't just sit here waiting for you. If you came ten years ago, I would have killed you. He wipes his eye. In the silence, the lieutenant draws a line in his notes. One more down. We can ask him everything. Oh, yes. Perfect. How long had you been watching her? Since she came to Martinez. I saw her sneaking in the reeds early in the morning, behind the fell building. It was dark, still winter. She didn't have her skimpy outfit on then. Just a spot in the night, moving. Past the fell building on the coast? What was she doing there? Hiding something in the water. The boy. She had a fag after she'd done it. I was up in the ruins there. She couldn't see me, but I could see her, smoking. She was nervous, but not scared. What do you think she hid there? Her passport. And tickets to Villiers. <coughs> and from there to Cachebru. She didn't lie about that then. It was true. In the free state of Semenine, hidden away at the edge of the earth, near the pale. This is the hidden boy she told us about. You looked into it? After she was gone. Did you keep what was in it? When we found the submersible, it was empty. No. Why would I do that? I didn't need tickets to Villiers. I'd put them back. If I wanted to extort someone, I'd do better. This implies that he's thought about extorting her. Also, a little inconsistency here. He was surprised to hear her name Clasia before. Would he not have seen it on the documents? You saw her name on the passport, but before, when I said her name is Klasia, you didn't seem to recognize it. You didn't say Klasia in there. He shakes his head. What did it say her name was in the passport? Uh, it was something. Uh, I don't remember. It was dark that morning. I only remember her face on the photo. Are you sure? We checked the submersible. There was nothing there. 
Why would I need that trash? I'm not going to be here. Moving on, did you continue watching her after this? I did. She had a face like an archipelago, with those birthmarks. And a body hard and lean and bruised all over. Black and yellow. I could see she's taken a beating. I could see who she was, too. A spook. On the run. Revachal's the cloaker of capital now. All the bagmen and arms dealers end up here to do drugs and have sex like animals. You could tell she was a spook from the documents? She had different color hair on the photo and glasses. Forged. Some sordid bourgeois affair. I've heard about this kind of thing on the radio. The bruises. You can't make that out in a scope. And you could see her bruises through the scope of her rifle? You can't see bruises through a scope. It's just a blur. Reaction speed, don't fuck me on this, please. How does he know those minute details about her body? It quickly comes to you. The bruises on her body. Any chance you've seen them through a hole in a wall? Oh, yes. Cutting those drugs of hers into little lines with a knife. Masturbating. Did you make that hole? With a clip point knife. Good for listening in, too. For hearing the moaning and the snorts. Ever seen her through a window on the roof? Like that, too? Yes. Bending like a bow against the glass. You've been through the secret route behind the whirling in rags. Those were your footprints there. You just changed your shoes. I've been through all of Martinez, every nook and cranny. And that too? Yes, that too. The things they did in that little room, what she'd do to feel good. Funny, the way light works. You turn it on inside, and it gets so dark out, you can't see a man looking in. I learned that in the twenties, when they were still hunting me. I've seen people do some shit, but... He keeps shaking his head. Those two took the cake. You hear the familiar scribble of the lieutenant's pen. A quick glance at you. One more loose end down. We're doing this, detective. How did you get in there, the hidden pinball workshop? I can just walk in there now after a good wash. I told you. They think I'm an antisocial. Closing hour is a good time. The kitchen's empty. You had to open the steel door in the kitchen? How? I got that open a long time ago. Some bourgeois gay merchant lived there. I don't know, 15 years ago? He left spare keys all over, and I took one. Then I saw her turn the light on one night in my scope. He points toward the whirling in rags. Andy found use for it, a spare key, like the one hanging behind the Union box window. One more thing, the flowers, Mr. Dross, the dried flowers that were on the roof. What about them? There, he's already admitted to it, just ask. Didn't we ask him that? Did you leave the dried Maybells behind her window? I did. I shouldn't have. It was a mistake. A tremor passes the right side of his face. Why did you? I was there one night, and she was crying. Yeah, we, we asked him that. What the hell? The day after I killed him. Yes. I don't know why I do the things I do anymore. Neither does he. He lowers his head, like a sunflower on a withered stalk. In the silence, the lieutenant draws a line in his notes, then nods at you once more. One more down. 
You wanted to punish her, so you killed him. She practically breastfed that man. You wouldn't believe the things she let him do to her. He shakes his head and stares at the ashes. While he stands here and rots. <laughs> I hate women too, you know? What the fuck? I mean, this is technically true. We saw through her lies. If that's what it means, and it's not anything misogynist or anything like that, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think we're talking about punishing, so let's not take it down that road. I I'm not like that. I don't think like that. No one gives a shit what you think. You and your cronies kill ten working-class men a day. I've heard the statistics on Channel 8. So in conclusion, it wasn't about him. It was about her. Her. He repeats, staring at the ashes. Then the reeds. There's a twitch in the corner of his eye. The lieutenant nods at you in acknowledgement. That's it. Motive. We have it. Where is she, that Clasier? I haven't seen her there for days. Is there a reason why we should tell him? I am not at liberty to say. I know she's gone. Locked up, or on the run. She kept staring into the scope, you know. In the end, this last week, at the fort, like she knew, like she knew I was here. It doesn't matter. Across the water, on a dilapidated jetty in a nameless village, made of grey cinder block houses with etonite roofs, two police officers and one special consultant look across a narrow strip of sea. He's there, doing what exactly I don't know. Satellite Officer Vitmer points at the ruins. Behind that anti-aircraft something. That's why we can't see him. Special Consultant Heidelstam is optimistic. We'll see the boat when he comes. Let's go get a coffee until then. I know this interesting little place. Where? His voice trails off as the three walk down the jetty. As the men go, Patrol Officer Minnow looks back over her shoulder at the crumbling fortification like a rotten tooth rising out of the water. Good luck, Harry, she thinks. You need something good for this. We could get more. We've got him talking. Who knows what he's seen and done over the years. You could get more out of him. He likes talking. Enough. Take him in. Bend his arms behind his back and end this. Been looking at anything else you haven't liked? A tragic comedy. Druggies, prostitutes, and rentiers. More specifically? Specifically, the whole city is a charnel house. Stripped clean and draped in neon. But Martinez... Martinez is the worst. How come? Because of the racists. Everyone is a racist in Martinez. It's their favorite thing to do in the whole world. Listening to race-themed radio shows. In the ruins. In their lorries. He points inland. Pump full of steroids and Radio Revachal 92. Race this. Race that. It's all sanctioned by that social democratic union and the farce of a social democrat who runs it. Mr. Clear? Yes, the fly lava in his container. He let some nihilistic advertising yuppies erect a statue of Philippe III, a syphilitic murderer on the town square, to spit on the working class. 
Let him finish. Not since the serfs of ancient Pericarnassus has history produced a more inert social class than the Martinez proletariat. The rest of Revachol at least pretends to rebuild. These people still live in ruins. Intense, like animals, like those boom boom morons on the ice. A pity they didn't drown in that tent of theirs. He keeps shaking his head with sorrow for the sight he missed. That all? The worst of them is the blood-drenched Sucreon on her yacht, licking her lips. The old whore's gone now. Her gun-toting porcelain men are dead. So, actually, no. The worst is that old cock parading around in his uniform, throwing balls all day. It's not enough that the racists and liberals are dancing on our graves. The old loyalist ghouls still parade the ruins, too. Every morning he's there, while the parasites he fought to protect are off in Ozon, or Quayamoran, or some other island they built their palaces on, feeding on drugs and having sex with their own children. That's all the rich really want. Sex with their own children. Throughout history, even the royal bloodline of the suzerain, it's all just an excuse for them to have sordid sex. At least that old cunt Frisell is now dead. Mm-hmm. I have some questions about this. We did good when we pushed him under the horse car. Until, in the 30s, those disco whores. He breathes in, his breath heavy with hatred. You cannot make out a single word. The disco whores are too much. Hatred shuts down his brain's language center, leaving only a nonsensical sputter. There was something about a statue and nihilistic advertising agency people might be worth investigating. Disco whores? Whores. Is all he says. Even that word has to be pushed through his teeth with great force. The rage seethes too hard. By the cock parading in his colorful color for uniform, you mean, Rene? Every fucking morning for 34 years. Throwing that ball. One ball against the other. I've always loathed that game. That is not a working class game. I don't care what they say on Radio June. Royalist ghouls played like it was life itself. Click, clack across the water each day and that uniform like a parrot plumage i won't even mention that he's a traitor to his race a patank maniac race traitor just nod i remember him i remember him from lanos not him personally his make and model there were tens of thousands of them I thought we took them all out before the Liberals came to their rescue. We missed one. That one. With his shaky finger, he points to the city, toward the crater near the plaza where a lonely pine tree stands. There doesn't seem to be a single person under the pine today. Not even Gaston. Rene Hello. died. Rene died. I'm surprised he didn't say anything about that. There's no one there. Fat and plump, like a pheasant, just begging to be popped off. Please, Mr. Dross, shoot me. Let's definitely back off now. Calm down. Or you, you'd like to kill him? I, I don't know. Like, I, I want to know his intentions. He obviously doesn't like that man. He doesn't like a lot of things. He has hatred for everything. You'd like to kill him? Not yet. 
I like to look at him strut around, place the crosshair on his medals. He didn't get the memo that Renee's dead. And just fiddle the trigger. Think about it. Let the bomb bomb melt in my mouth. Aren't we gonna say anything about this? Save the treat for later? The lieutenant asks cheerfully. He is a juicy bomb bomb, that one. A real treat to the black day. The blackest. When I put that gun in my own mouth, I think. No, don't waste it. Put this lead in that cock, Rene. For the boys he killed. And then I look at him throw those balls, and I suddenly feel. He has a lot of hatred for most of the NPCs we've met, so at this point I'm extremely surprised he didn't pop someone else too. Rene was just sitting there every day at the save spot for 35 years and he didn't pull the trigger. Better. I even hid one bullet, so I'd always have one. For him. Haven't seen him around lately, strutting around. Must be down with arthritis. I hope it hurts like hell. I hope he sweats blood. Man, the way he reads his lines. I mean, yeah, the things he says are terrible, but the way he that this guy reels, reads his lines are incredibly good. Hearing it may destabilize him. There it is. You sure you've gotten everything from him? Renee's dead. He died of old age a couple days ago. No. Yes. I waited too long. I waited too long and now he's dead? I'm sorry, Mr. Dras. I understand you knew him for a long time. They're all dead now. Fuck it. If he really wanted to kill him so bad, he would have done. There must have been a thousand black days on these islands. His health ailing. Exactly. You cared about him? All human beings care about each other. I cared for seeing his head explode. Now, God damn this world. He reminded him of himself. The same hatred. The same. You try to think of something else. But no, it's just hatred. Yeah, they were both very angry old men. You had a thousand chances to kill him. And I blew them all. What does it matter now? He's gone. Ancient dust. Are you okay, Mr. Dross? To go on? You think I haven't seen people die? It's all I've seen them do. Fuck and die. All the other plans we had. To love. To colonize the Pale. It's all fucked. He's not okay. This is just another black day in a row of black days. Something strange is keeping him together, making him endure. There was something about the statue on the roundabout and syphilis? Frisell the first, Philip the second. What's the difference? Syphilitic murderers the lot. I don't want to think about those things anymore. I'm tired of all of it. You mentioned the Union is social democratic and Mr. Clare a farce of a social democrat. I don't want to talk about goddamn social democrats. Traitors is all they are. Brain dead. He waves his arm, agitated and despondent at the same time. Rene still presses on his mind. I'm glad we talked about this. Now. Glad we talked about what? Wasn't there other people? Hold on. His lip curls into a sneer at no. the memory. Glad we talked about what? Composure. That's it for now. Is this a... This is a white check. I ain't going anywhere. I need to change my clothes for the last time. 
<laughs> is it gonna be the last time, though? We don't know where Ruby is. Maybe she will pop out of nowhere and just uh, start playing uh, the, the radio again. Composure. Let's see. Let's see what we got. The pants. I've been wearing shitty clothes altogether, I realized. Uh, how much composure do I have? Plus one. That's the only composure I do have. I need more. It also bugs me. We didn't get a chance to uh, to wear the armor pieces during the uh, tribunal. Sucks. Composure plus one. Terrible. Perception encyclopedia. Composure, composure, composure. Uh, plus one. These shoes. This is minus one. We have plus three composure, and we have like a million points. We can make it even better. Let's see our percentage at the moment. The old man stares despondently at the logs. It's like he's forgotten you're there. Assess his body language. This is probably gonna fail like 90% of the things we've done lately. What strikes you about this gaunt man is not the stomach pain, or the cough, or the malnutrition. For a man who's spent 44 years hidden in the urban wild... He is surprisingly okay. Indeed. He speaks fluidly. His movements are rapid, if erratic. His voice, despite the cough, is there. It is capable of expressing complicated ideas. Above all, he seems animated. Animated by what? It's a mystery. This animation comes at a cost too. Erratic hand gestures. Thought processes cut off like threads as he just stares at the logs or the reeds. He also suffers mood swings bubbling to the surface, unconstrained by his nervous system. Great leaps of emotion. From anger to grief. Despair. Dementia? You've seen demented people before. This feels similar, yet different. When his thoughts move, they are lucid. Keen, even. Not senile. Wouldn't a foul temper be a byproduct of his life? Perhaps, but his seems more than that. The inner turmoil takes unexpected turns, as if forced on him in a way. In summary, you sense some underlying neurological disorder. Mr. Dross, are you okay? How is your memory? No, I'm not okay. I shit blood, and I'm surrounded by insane people. There it is again. Erratic hand motions, bouts of rage, and the stomach thing too, of course. Yusuf Lilianovich Dross, you're under arrest for the murder of Elis Cortaner. What? But you said I would be taken to the... This terror is the sum of all the uncontrollable movements and mood swings he's been exhibiting. Your wayfarer rights have been suspended. Information provided to the officers on the scene will be used against you by the prosecution. You will be given legal counsel within one week and must face court in 44 days. Do you understand? Do you understand? But... Do you understand, sir? No, I don't want to. I have to stay here. He looks at the reeds, eyes submerged in growing terror. He's sweating. Beads are forming on his forehead. Your confirmation is not required, sir. Now on to the boat. Perception. 58 Maximize it, baby Please don't fail me Wait There it is again To your north As it has been since you came to the coast The reeds whisper Storks rubbing against each other But then In the middle of it What? 
Something completely different. It sounds like a bow, very slowly being drawn against the strings of a violin. A very small violin, made of reeds and rushes. Maybe there is room for three on the boat. Shush, K Kim, do you hear that? What? What are you talking about? Is this... really us? Your skin crawls. Oh my god! A delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb, to then just stand there, moving its scythe-like arms in ghostly silence. Blink. It's still there, an unfolding mechanism of reed-like chitin hovering in place. What is that? What are you talking about? The old man looks at the reeds. Then it's you. Holy shit, what is it? The giant stick insect! There's nothing there. He looks confused. The stick insect is over three meters tall. It looks straight at you with its tiny pinprick eyes and its grotesquely small head. You feel your legs shaking under you and your gun hand move to your holster to grab the gun. I don't even have bullets. Don't shoot it. There is. I see it. Tell me what you see, damn it. I can't make out one small thing in the reeds. Kim, can you see it? I can see it. Four simple words. Thank God. If he can see, then you're not insane. But that means... It's really there, spinning slowly, in absolute silence, its limbs long and slender. Be very, very careful. The lieutenant whispers, then takes a step toward the giant anthropod. But what was that? Kim, get out of the way! The air smells sweet. And scary somehow. The creature stands on long stilt like legs, antennae hanging from its head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. Reed like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. The hiss is different from the strings you heard before. It says something else in a lower pitch. Approach carefully. We're in, boys. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter, a sort of happiness. Sweat drips from your brow, soaking your chest. You reek of it, your chemicals. The tracheal system on the creature's abdomen expands in front of you to take in and expel air. It's smelling you. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Okay, Kim. Take the picture. Okay. With a slow ring of metal, the lieutenant slides the leans open and raises to eyes level. 
There is no change in the insect's motion while it's being aimed by the camera. It remains fixated on you. In three. If it moves, you jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. Three, two, one. The shrill flash of the camera cuts the air like the blade of a sword. The phasmid freezes in its bright light. Head turned toward the lieutenant, hypnotized by the flash. It stands frozen before you. I got it. You hear the lieutenant whisper as the creature's shape develops on the photo paper in his hand. A polychrome ghost of white streaks against the reeds in the sky, and you as a shadow before it. Really nice photo, Kim. Good job. For all time. Slowly reach out and touch the creature's whisker. The antennae hang from a great height. With your hand shaking, you barely touch the tip of the left whisker. On contact, the kiting curls into a spiral, like the tip of a poison ivy. Its touch on your fingertip feels cold, ticklish. It is surprisingly delicate, the curly end of the whisker, like a young vine. It's even a bit wet. Be careful, detective. It's moving. Look at your finger. You were right. It glistens with some kind of moisture. The creature in front of you stays frozen. <laughs> Lick your finger. No, don't do that. Carefully pat its side like forearm. The limb before you is incredibly light, like eggshell. It's much lighter than a reed. You feel a soft push could tip the creature over. It's hollow exoskeleton collapsing. Warning. What is happening? Is it okay? Is it gonna bite me? Is it gonna eat me? What's happening now? Run your hand up the slender limb higher. A small shadow passes the creature's arm. High above you, its black pearl eyes still glisten, mesmerized by the light passing its nervous system. There is some kind of countdown happening as it slowly processes the overwhelming brightness of the signal. The invertebrate is regaining control. The stimulus overloaded it. It's passing like an extended moment or a gallstone. Here, within the smooth white inner part of its limb, you sense something very intimate. Thoughts. Lieutenant, it's thinking with its limbs. The nervous system could be spread out like that, over the extremities. Like a cuttlefish. Or a ryacinta, an occidental leaf insect, with its brain stored in four leaf like extensions. Or a mimrisy octopus with its intelligent tentacles. We got it. Another shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life, like a record continuing where it left off, in a swaying, praying motion. Even the small black pearls of its eyes do not stray from you. It's smelling me. Maybe it is real, the pheromone. The lieutenant's mouth is agape. The insect's head is crowned with reed-like scales, the shape of seed heads. They rustle as the air moves. The ventricles at its abdomen continue expanding like lunglets. Breathing you in. Your sour, greasy semiochemicals on the breeze. It must be extremely pleasant. Hello. Uh, I'm Harry. Uh, I don't really know who I am. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. Stand on your tiptoes and look more closely. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming, slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. The faintest smell like you've never felt before. Like 
burnt roses. Kim, it's foaming. Careful, it may be poisonous. The lieutenant watches you apprehensively. The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt caramel, as the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. The little bubbles begin to burst, one by one, letting out that same smell like summer burning. Apricot blossoms, white blossoms erupting, a sensation like cold hands on your face. Raise your hand, slowly. The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly, there is silence. Raise the other hand too. As you do, the invertebrate comes to life, its limbs moving independent of each other. As if each has a mind of its own, they are white like stalks of porcelain, knitting above you, praying to you. Put your hands down instead. Sets of complex eyes follow you. Droplets of dew on either side of the head. 97%. Spoke to the hanged man. Limbs are thinking. Do not give up on phasmid. Nose of parthenogenesis. Tell me. What are you doing? Nothing. Its what? simple eyes give off no flicker of light. What? No one is home. The twitches of what its the limbs fuck are was that? Light. No! Oh, this is a white check. <laughs> I didn't have to replay the whole sequence. Well, uh, my bad. It's still, it's Inland Empire, which is my primary ability. And we have a 97%, which would imply we missed the 3% last time. Let's go again. I exist. I exist too. Tell me what it's like for you. Wunderbar. I am Ill. Ill. What is your illness? My body, My body aches. aches. I'm Some bleeding. bleeding. I smelt it. As soon as you stepped on the island, strawberries, fresh burst of red strawberries, ripe, turning riper, soon you'll be rotten. Now I will tell you how it is for me. For me, it is a series of half-lit images, a kind of darkness being intruded upon, transient, dim, moist. Intruded upon by... But by what? Shapes of plants and animals. And internal sensations. A swarm of sounds. Tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearms. All speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am at the end of an air funnel. Weightless. So light. It only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul. And if I did, it would never ache. You're the type of animal I would like to be. Are you sure? Yes, yes I'm, I'm sure. sure. Why, Why do you ask? Sometimes, when molting, I will grow a lost limb. One time something went wrong, and a small leg replaced a missing antenna. That's cool. No, the leg tried to move around independently, making it hard to walk. You don't have a foot there now. Yes. Thankfully someone ate it. The next time I molded, I grew an antenna again. 
I am a detective. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? Uh, the, the killer. He's in a bad state. Deteriorating fast now. He thinks I am beneficial to him, but I am not. I only quicken his deterioration. You're destroying him? Very slowly, and only because he won't go away. It is meant to keep them from noticing me, to interfere with the pictures in their heads. But he has looked at me for too long, and I am destroying him. What exactly are you? I am an all-known species of the order Phantasmodia, endemic to the Insolandia Insula. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, molding, cloning myself, unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. No one unnoticed by the first settlers and the land surveyors of the Suzerain. Also, by the soldiers of the revolution and the officials of the occupation. Even the Samanese islanders who came here first, but did not stay, have not seen me. I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the cities of Malaysia in Revolution, district of Martinez, March 51. Where does, Where does this, this come, come from? from? All, All this, this around, around us, us, the world. Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lily. We need, we to, need know. to know. Perhaps, know. Perhaps, Perhaps it's, it's sent to us by, by a god? god? I think we should eat it. If it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Or read. Yum yum. Wait, so... So you, oh, you look, look like, like a reed, reed and, and you eat reeds. Yes, they don't mind. Have you accidentally eaten another reed phasmid? Yes, I once cloned myself and ate the little ones. It was winter and I woke up at the wrong time. It was an accident. <laughs> is this a dream? What is happening? No, you are awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. That's insane. No, you are. The moral of our encounter is I am a relatively medium life form, while it is you who are a total extreme madness. A volatile senior nerve system ominously new to the planet. The pale too came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Nidarians do not. The radially symmetrics do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. Wait, Wait the, the pale, pale is human-made? It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you, eating away at reality. A great on natural territory. Its advent coincides with the arrival of the human mind. I don't have that kind of power. You are a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Give me enough time, you will wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. How? We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Worse, how? Everything your eyes touch goes back there, behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if? He misplays us all one day, we'll just forget. I have already forgotten the whole world once. 
when I drunk too much. So it is already happening. Soon, one of you will close your eyes and open them to see that none of this ever existed. Kim, am I having a violent epileptic seizure? It doesn't look like that, no. What does it look like? You're just staring at it. Then I think I'm having a vision about the final fate of mankind. Okay. Is it somehow related to the case? N no, I am. Um, I told you what it's about. Uh, our fate. I think you should back away from the unstudied species now. I have, I have to, say to say goodbye, goodbye now. now. I have no more thoughts. thoughts. Um, that was all. No, there is one more. Of all the creatures I've met, you are the most beautiful. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you before you go. That woman, turn from the ruin, turn and go forward, for all mankind. Um, what woman? You cannot lie to me. Behind you, it smells of fires. So awfully far you were prepared to go in her presence. And it. I will try. She was held on Earth. It doesn't take a three meter stick insect to tell you that. Disengage slowly. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. It is beautiful! And so fast! And, just like that, it's gone. Skating away across the sea's calm mirror, like a skipping stone. Leaving nothing but circles on the water. And something under it. In the place it stood, bobbing there, among the reeds. A collection of items. Did it drop loot for us? It's gone. The lieutenant looks north, with his hand raised to his brow. It can walk on water? Apparently, yes. Like a water strider. Only... I've never seen anything like that in my life. What's that? In the reeds? Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have a look. What now? What now? The old man behind you repeats suddenly. He's put his hand into the ash. It's dirty and black. In some kind of strange, semi-catatonic state. Our suspect is not looking so good. We need to check on him. Yes, but the loot! <gasps> the scope! Oh, baby! It's so creepy to look at! I gotta save my game and wear it, dude. I gotta save my game and wear the whole shebang. Kim is not gonna be happy, but hey, we got the whole set. Don't we? Take that off. Yeah. Wait, are we missing a piece? Where's the pants? Didn't I have pants? Is this how it's supposed to look like? It's clipping all over. One, two, three, four. I, I got four pieces. I, I was supposed to find the fifth or something? Oh god, it looks terrifying. Evidence, Glacius passport. Oh my god, so many good things at once. 
A common 30mm sniper scope attachable to almost any bolt action 4.46 caliber. It uses an older style non dotted range finding reticle. Seaweed is still stuck on the leans and it suffered water damage from its time in the Phasmid's dowry. Dowry? Dowry? The bold action 4.46 caliber Triangong is a poor man's sniper rifle. While not the most reliable of firearms, it's relatively precise due to a very manageable recoil, thus allowing the shooter to take multiple consecutive shots fast. This particular piece is missing a scope though. We got it. We got it. We cannot combine them though. There's a reason to. We also have uh, the passport. Uh, how about the clothes? Let me see that helmet real, real quick. I've got so many things at once. This monstrous looking bug eyed ceramic helmet was in the Phasmid's nest. It still has some reeds sticking out of it, and it smells of seawater but it's otherwise wearable, if not exactly comfortable. Putting it on feels scary somehow. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if I like that one very much. I'll go back to wearing my, uh, my jacket for now. <laughs> God! Oh yeah, the, the passport, of course. It's well-traveled passport with visa stamped in it. It is issued by the Republic of Orania. You found it in the Phasmid's nest on the island. You can open it for more details. This passport, issued by the Sovereign Republic of Orania, is issued to a black-haired woman called Katazina Alazier. Classius hidden documents from the MT boy. Look at the photo. It's Klasia, with short black hair and glasses. She looks boyish, younger somehow. It says Katarzyna uh, Alashie. She said it would be for Anouk Meyer Smith. Anouk Meyer Smith. Katarzyna Alasia was supposed to be her real name. Where Klasia comes from, remember? God damn it. I told you she kept on lying to you. She's probably lying to someone else right now. Another detective. Katarzyna Alasia was supposed to be her real name. She lied to us. Yes, somehow she managed to lie to us one more time. In a way, she's still lying to us right now. What was this doing in the Phasmid's nest? Maybe our man, Mr. Dross, took it from Classius, or whatever her name was. Hiding place, or...? Perhaps for some blackmailing plan? Perhaps. But that still doesn't explain how it got into the nest. <laughs> the Phasmid took it, and I sensed it do so. As or something open up the boy with spindly legs. Uh, it's not like I can tell him anything else at this point, so might as well go with it. Like a magpie? What a coincidence. Then it would also have collected the other objects, which would be highly unusual. By now, the lieutenant has accepted your unusual methods. <laughs> Poor Kim. I can see how the helmet could wash up on the island, and the scope. Maybe Mr. Dross lost it, but to seek this out would be very unusual behavior for an arthropod. What's your real name then? I don't know, but it was not Katarzyna Alasio, or Anouk Meyer Smith, or Klasia, whoever she is. When we get back, I need to warn our holding cells. We need to double the security around her. Put the password away. What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Sir, how could you not see the phasmid? See? He stares at the reeds and falls silent. Mr. Dras? The man does not respond. He keeps staring, black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets, his gap-toothed mouth shaking. Wave your hand in front of him. A light shiver passes him, followed by nothing. His hands are trembling, and he breathes slowly. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. The good news is, this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Dross? 
The trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here, while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. What has happened to this man? Old age and shock. He looks at him, then you. I think it's the phasmid. Yes, the arrest and the appearance of the phasmid, the combined stress. But you think it's something more than that, don't you? There's much more. Remember what it said when it spoke. I talked to the phasmid. It said it's destroying him. You should be more careful, detective. Are you sure it wasn't having an effect on you? Maybe. Anyway, it's only trying to remain unseen. Degradation is a side effect. A valid hunch. Long-term exposure to something like that could be neurodegenerative. Also, please be careful when approaching a known species in the future, detective. He couldn't see it, Kim. It's just the reeds for him. That could be part of the shock. But you're right, something is off here. Mr. Dras. He touches the man's shoulder. No response. Maybe this is how the phasmid has stayed hidden all these years. Then how did we see it? Oh, you mean, whatever does this, does it over time? Teenagers, kids, drunks, sightings are brief, and hence not credible. But anyone who spends a long time with it... Yes. You forget it's there. Mm hmm Mr. Dross, have you ever seen a stick insect pretending to be the reeds? The, the, the... the old man stutters. The doctors will have to look at this. I hope your station has better medical personnel than 57. This is a little advanced for a nurse. Before, when I evaluated his state, he seemed strangely animated. He was energetic and articulate. After all these years alone, with little hygiene or medication, I would expect worse. Perhaps this animation is induced by something in the phasmid? It does not seem to be animated now it's left. Honestly, I'm ready to believe anything at this point. Maybe it is psychoactive. I mean, why not? It's three meters tall. Could it be there's something hormonal in his relationship to the phasmid? You mean pheromonal? He seemed a little off for a man his age, Randy. The scope? Knowing of her bruises? His disposition toward Miss Oranje? I see what you mean. He's been here for a long time. Who knows how much of it in his company? He did seem distressed when it finally came to arresting him. Like he didn't want to leave this place. And the insect, maybe. He looks at his notebook. I have absolutely forgotten to take notes. I hope I remember all of this. This will be one hell of a report. Thank God we have the photo. We found some things in the phasmid's nest, Mr. Dross. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Perhaps you should... Show him the Oranese passport. No reaction. His breathing is slow, and he appears very old all of a sudden. Around 80. Did you take this passport and other papers from a boy on the coast? The... spirit... He hears us. The spirit? No reply. He's gone again. Try something else? We got him back for a moment. Tap on the helmet on your head. Nothing. Just dull staring. Not even rage left. Wherever he is. If Kuno kicked it into the sea, as he said he did, the ebb would put it back here. This makes sense. Mr. Dross could have picked it up. Or the phasmid even. If it did, this is incredible. Show him the detached scope. I... I lost... You lost it, Mr. Dross? He turns his eyes to the reeds again. As he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. 
He lost the scope. Then it somehow made its way over there. With the help of a magpie phasmid. The lieutenant observes the lens sparkle in your hand. This sight is a T9, Mr. Dross. Was it attached to the rifle when you made the shot? Silence. Not even a sigh. You've gotten all you will out of this poor being. I'm going to let you rest now, Mr. Dross. The plastic cape flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. The blacks of his eyes are receding. His pupils are returning to normal. The strength has all gone out of him. Just frail old bones in a sack of tracksuit trousers and a windbreaker. Hang tight. We should think about getting back to the mainland to get help. He'll be safe here if we don't take too long. Oh, man. That was wild. That was freaking wild. Kim didn't say anything about the boots, I'm surprised. <laughs> it looks uh, super weird. Oh, 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 what's this? Is this where we came out of? I think so, yeah, because the island is a lot smaller than it looks like. Before we move any further, let's take a small break, and I will see you on the next episode of Disco Elysium. Until then, thank you everybody for watching, have fun, whatever you do, take care of yourselves, and do not forget, keep on gaming. I will see you all next time.